Welcome to Meet the Candidates. I'm Keith Tebow. As a public service, FRC-TV is once again inviting all candidates running for local office the opportunity to use up to five minutes of their time to speak directly to you, the voters of Fall River. What you are about to see are the candidates running in the September 13th preliminary election. Since there's no preliminary election for school committee, you will not be seeing those candidates on this program. You will see the candidates running for mayor and city council. The order the candidates appear will be the same order as they are listed on the Fall River ballot. All candidates were invited to participate in this taping. Those who chose not to take part will have their name displayed over a blank screen. So let's meet the candidates running for mayor and city council in the September 13th preliminary election. Hello, I'm Carolyn Burton, candidate for the mayor of the city of Fall River. I would like to tell you about myself and my vision for the future of our city. For those of you who do not know me, I am a native of Fall River, educated in our public schools, along with my sisters, brother, and my children. I have enjoyed my lifetime working here, which began at age 15 as part-time employee at Duro Manufacturing, moving on to work in the needle trades, assembly line, as clerk steno and school committee for our school system, and for the past 30 years, thanks to you, owning and operating a successful insurance and real estate business. I am a property owner here for 34 years. I am second generation American. Like many of you, my father fought in World War II and my brother in Vietnam. I am a mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. But mostly, I am a daughter of this city. Why am I running for office? Well, for over 20 years, I have watched with dismay the decline of our city, seeing the proud people of Fall River losing their jobs with the closing of our factories and having no alternative industry. Right now, our city's unemployment rate is among the highest in the state, as well as our crime rate. Recently, I have witnessed our education system falling to the point we fear being taken over by the state. I ask you, is this a legacy we want to leave our children and grandchildren? Luckily, my parents taught me to question everything. Well, folks, here are my questions. Why are we continually electing people who promise and never deliver? Why is our sister city, New Bedford, moving ahead of us? For example, their short sea shipping. They even have a ferry service to the islands. We have wonderful waterways here, as well as great highway access. Yet, yeah, we are behind. Let us compare their town town area to ours. They have shops, restaurants, entertainment, a theater, a free monthly event where everyone is walking around enjoying themselves, a two-day summer festival, and a waterfront festival. What happened to our downtown? What happened to our festival? What happened to our theaters? Let's look at Providence, Rhode Island. I remember a time when people were afraid to enter that city. Now, when you ask someone where they're going, Providence is often the answer. They have great restaurants, entertainment, even water fires. Why can't we get something going? And when we do get something going, how can we keep it going? Lately, I have been criticized for not presenting a platform or position papers. I have been accused of, and I quote, having the arrogance of attempting to run this city by the seat of my pants without a plan. Well, folks, question this. Where have all the platforms, position papers, and promises gotten us? I am here today to share with you a couple of great ideas for Fall River, which includes plans for today and a vision for our future of our city. Where did I get these ideas? From you. How? By asking questions and paying attention to your answers. Idea number one. I learned about insurance companies who pay for medical treatment for people who live outside of the intercontinental United States, including extra expenses such as meals, transportation, housing, and pharmaceuticals. Presently, these patients and families are sent to Boston. How easy it would be for us to develop a plan showing these companies how they can save money by utilizing Fall River's great medical facilities, as well as saving on additional expenses while being treated here. How wonderful it would be that that very same revenue comes to our city 
This surely is a win-win situation, a way of putting Fall River on the map. Idea number two, what do you think of Fall River being reborn as the green city? Fall River, a model for the state or perhaps the country. By utilizing solar energy, beginning with the government center, we would save on utility bills and receive income for extra energy output. Right now, there are grants available in Massachusetts for that purpose. I am an ordinary citizen who is not going to give up on Fall River. I do believe the citizens of Fall River deserve a promise from their candidate. So I promise to be your voice. I promise to run this city like the business it is. I promise to do everything in my power to unite the people of Fall River and give each and every one a voice in the operation of our city. If you agree with me, please cast your ballot for me, for mayor, on September 13th and help me help you take our city back. Hello, I'm Mayor Will Flanagan. Two years ago, we won the election because our opponents underestimated our great network of supporters. They underestimated how effective our grassroots campaign would be. And most of all, they underestimated Fall River. I grew up in Fall River. I went to Fall River Public Schools. I worked my way through high school and college at the local grocery store. We've all been working hard our whole lives. Nobody here was given anything in life. We had to work for it. We had to fight for it. I was elected in 2009 because our city wanted change. We wanted stronger schools. We wanted safer and cleaner streets. And we wanted a more responsive city government. We wanted more jobs and new opportunities. We wanted a more secure economic future and one for our children. Since I took office, my administration has laid the groundwork needed for that change. We stabilized our city's bond rating to make it more attractive for long-term investment. We finalized the long-awaited agreement with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to create a forward biopark and bring as many as 8,000 new jobs to our city. We fought to secure state and federal funding for South Coast Rail. We introduced a waterfront rezoning plan that will streamline investment and development along the Taunton River in Mount Hope Bay. We met with tribal leaders to discuss the potential for a resort-style casino in our city. We partnered with Bristol Community College and UMass Dartmouth to expand workforce training programs. And we have been working with state and federal leaders to identify new strategies for job creation. We have taken great strides towards a better economic future. But I recognize that all these positive steps are little consolation to those who remain unemployed. But everything that happens in this city happens through the hard work and determination of its amazing citizens. And in order to achieve the generational responsibility we all want for our city, we must continue to invest in our educational system. We have taken significant steps to improve our educational system and ensure that we are training an educated workforce. Despite difficult budgets, we have added teachers. We've completed district improvement plans that emphasize college and career readiness. And we partnered with Teach for America to help ensure educational opportunity in our school system. In fact, we're already seeing results. Our dropout rate has decreased while our graduation rate has increased. We have doubled the number of Durfee High School students in advanced placement courses. And we triple the number of qualifying AP test scores. We as a city need to continue this achievement in science, technology, engineering, and math education in order for our students to compete in the 21st century economy. My administration understands the importance of an educated workforce, and so do you. And if we can raise the level of talent here in our city, we will make it easier to attract, grow, and retain new business. My fellow citizens, I'm not perfect, and I made my fair share of mistakes. And what you learn is that no one person has all of the answers. It will take all of us working together to move our city forward. We recognize the task at hand is not easy. Together, we will do our best to create jobs, enhance public safety, and improve education. And together, we will renew the promise of a brighter future for Fall River that we were all raised with. I'm committed to serving as your mayor. I care about Fall River, and I care about its people. On Tuesday, September 13th, I respectfully ask for your vote and your support. Thank you, and God bless. Hello, 
My name is Stephanie Corey, and I am running for mayor of Fall River. On a recent train trip coming back to Providence from New York City, I sat next to a woman with a very unusual ring on the middle finger of her left hand. When I commented on it, she said it was her wedding ring. I asked, why do you have it on the wrong finger? Replied the woman, I married the wrong guy. Given the disappointing results that we've all been experiencing in the city lately, it's fair to ask, are we married to the wrong guy? Are we wedded to the wrong strategy? I believe so. This political race is not a contest among persons. We all have our talents and abilities. We each want what is best for the city. What sets us apart from one another is our priorities, our vision, and our strategies for success. What I hear when I meet with people in Fall River and really listen to their stories is an immense frustration at Fall River city government's failure to do what they say they're going to do when they say they're going to do it. All politics is local, and the local talk on the street is that they've been let down by politicians who promise that the city will become a community where their children want to stay after they graduate and raise their families here. I have a reputation for being critical because I speak out on what I see as bad policy for the people of Fall River. I know how political everything has become from zoning, economic development, hiring practices, enforcement of ordinances, and even the ability of residents to support candidates of their choice without fear of retribution by whatever administration is currently in office. We deserve better. I think that it's high time that we started getting things right. The current mayor was elected because he promised a smaller legal team, more jobs, transparency in government, improvement in the education system, and an end to the rainwater tax. Instead, we got a 30% increase in the Corporation Council's budget, a high unemployment rate, a gag order, pay raises for management in the school system, and no movement at all on the legality of the rainwater tax. It's time to repurpose the Fall River Office of Economic Development and focus on small business owners, the backbone of Fall River and the nation's economy, and help them to expand, grow, and create jobs, which in turn will help the city. The Small Business Administration estimates that 80% of all new jobs are created by small businesses. It's time to build our way out of our recession, one, two, three, four jobs at a time. Fall River, we can expect better. It's time to incorporate quality of life into our economic development goals. Bike paths and walking trails are economic development. Neighborhood revitalization is economic development. Holding the owners of blighted properties and absentee landlords accountable is economic development. Education is economic development. It's time to create a community where people who are educated here stay here. And it's time we hired people for what they know and not who they know. It's time to implement the master plan and not allow it to become just another expensive study paid for by the taxpayers that ends up gathering dust on some shelf. It's time to act on the future instead of continually lighting needless fires that must be put out so we can say we save the day. To do all this requires a leader with vision, integrity, and one who can implement that vision. That's what Providence did, and we can do the same in Fall River. Are we further ahead now than two years ago? Are the streets cleaner? Are the potholes filled on your street? Has the crime rate gone down? Have we come out of our double-digit unemployment? Has your quality of life improved? Do you feel safer? It's time for Fall River to elect a mayor with the political will to lead, the strength of character to govern by a set of ethical principles, and the common sense to hire people who are experts at what they do so we can accomplish great things. It's time. And that's why I'm running for mayor, because I am that person. Expect better, Fall River. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Richard Renzi, and I am seeking the office of mayor. I would like to first start by saying thank you for tuning in and to remind you that this year of, is the most important year, if any, that you, the voter, get out there and make the right choice for who is going to represent you as mayor. Born and raised in Providence, Rhode Island, I am 43 years old and currently living in the Flint section of the city. I am not a politician. 
or a lawyer. What I am, though, is a security and loss prevention specialist who has decided to put his career on hold to make a run for that of what many like to call the sixth floor. I am a family man, a firm believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and in doing the right thing does not take a degree. I am a man of conviction, one that will lead by example and not by fear, a man whose position will not define him nor hinder what is best for the community. In fact, I am the only one of six candidates that truly is not related to or connected to anyone here in the city. I can plan for tomorrow by seeing beyond today. One who believes that today's youth is in fact tomorrow's leader and through many meet and greets will get them actively involved in the voting process. I have in preparedness a sports youth intervention program that when fully implemented will not only be tax free to, to you the taxpayer, but will help these children in their quest to be tomorrow's leader by building self-esteem and discipline. In addition to reducing crime, it also eliminates bullying and any unforeseen cost or expenditure associated with it. There's an old Christian saying that says, if each one of us reach another one of us, then the whole world will know the truth. This is what I am hoping you do. Please reach out to your friends and your neighbors of the community and let them know that you have a godly man running for the office of mayor, one that will do the right thing. Therefore, if elected, it starts right here with my commitment to restore government center and how we conduct business. This is first and foremost. My plan is to build a government that is proficient, cost-effective, and productive. Hire a full-time CFO and an, and an auditing firm to straighten out the financial mess that has been overlooked and for some reason continues to do so. We build, rebuild the school department from the bottom up within the first 12 months of my term and have it fully implemented within the second. Under my administration, we will come to witness a restructure of the RDA, the death of FROED, and the birth of the Fall River External Review Authority, otherwise known as FRERA. If we want to get her back, we must first come together. My plan is to represent the city, the people of the city first, followed by the city as a corporation whose negligence has caused it to misplace its original intent to propose good legislation in place of contracts that have bound our hands in the past and then continue to do so for many years to come, to work independently and aggressively to jumpstart this community and its economy. I will call upon the City Council many times between now and then to comb over the city ordinances of the past, repeal them if necessary, and write new ones that are good for the people and for future business. Together, we will redefine our dependency on everyday services by comparing data collected over the past 10 years. This will clearly manifest our true growth and or decline, allowing us to cut back expenses on some things while expanding them on others. It will, it will avoid us raising taxes and minimize our dependency upon state aid. In closing, this run for the office of mayor is not for me, but for one person only, and that is you. For you are and can be one united, one in community, and one in spirit. Thank you for the opportunity to run and hopefully the chance to lead this great city. Thank you. Over the past two years, we have seen Fall River's unemployment climb to the highest in the state. We have seen crime increase while the number of police officers has been cut again. Our public school system is one of only two in Massachusetts threatened with state takeover. There is no good reason why other communities should succeed while we continue to fall further behind. My education, public service, and my personal and professional life experiences have taught me much. I've learned that leaders must be good listeners in order to take full advantage of the knowledge and experience around them. No one person has all the answers, 
and elected officials are no exception. As mayor, I will be the leader to bring the city council, school committee, legislative leaders, and government employees together to confront our city's problems head on. Our goals are simple. One, reduce unemployment by changing job creation and retention strategies that currently don't work. Two, make our neighborhoods safe and clean with more police officers and DPW workers. Three, make government affordable by reducing wasteful spending for highly paid lawyers, administrators, and indirect services. Four, improve education and literacy by moving money into direct services for students. And five, reduce the economic drain caused by excessive transient subsidized housing. Creating new jobs and protecting the jobs we have must be our number one priority. It's time to hold the Fall River Office of Economic Development accountable. They will have goals and they will be expected to meet those goals or face consequences. Once I am elected mayor, we will work with our existing businesses and create a mayor's ambassador team to attract new companies to Fall River. We will start a new outreach program to make sure that we meet the needs of our existing businesses. We recently read about an industrial park business that had to threaten to leave Fall River just to get someone to pay attention to their needs. We can no longer take our existing businesses for granted. Every job we have is worth protecting. We need to make our city safe and clean. Businesses and residents do not want to locate in high crime com communities. Fall River has the fourth highest crime rate in the state, and yet the mayor recently cut nine positions from the police department budget. Folks, this is not how to fight crime in Fall River. I recently had the opportunity to ask the president of the Fall River Police Association what we can do to reduce crime in our city. He responded, give our police department the manpower it needs and we will take back the streets of Fall River. Ladies and gentlemen, this must be our goal. Fall River is going through some very difficult times, but we can make a difference. I've learned in my life that when determination remains strong, things can change. Dreams that may seem unrealistic to some can come true with a steady, unwavering vision and an inspiring leader who people can believe in. I am running for mayor because I believe in you and I believe in me. And I know that once we join forces, no one will be able to stop us from making Fall River the great community that you and I know it can and will be. I ask for your vote on Tuesday, September 13th. Let's get Fall River working again. Hello, my name is Chris Bartley, and it's my pleasure to introduce myself to you and my campaign for city council. I'm a lifelong resident of Fall River, along with my wife, Lori, and our son, Brayden. I've been active in many community organizations throughout the city, and with your vote of confidence, I'm committed to restoring integrity to our city council. My campaign team and myself have developed a strong campaign strategy that identifies many issues within the city, and one that will offer solutions. The message of our campaign is to restore integrity to the city council. Forever needs to elect the right individuals to move the city forward, and only then will we be successful. Forever has faced serious declines in employment, and economic development, and the voters are ready for new ideas. I believe we deserve council members that will address citizens' needs from multiple perspectives, challenge the hardships and adversity that affect us all, and will work to restore integrity to the fore of a city council. We need individuals that are forward thinkers and have the leadership and foresight to plan ahead for the future. That's restored integrity. We need to bridge the gap between government and the everyday citizen, ensuring government is working for them. That's restored integrity. We need to improve relationships and foster solid working partnerships within all divisions of government. That's restored integrity. I believe the city needs to develop a marketing plan that pinpoints key targets and opportunities for city growth.
that the Forva Office of Economic Development should be held responsible for attaining. Forva has traditionally struggled with becoming a business-friendly city. The development of the waterfront industrial park, along with other areas in the city, will benefit greatly from a streamlined permitting process that allows companies to actually begin construction much sooner than the system we ha currently have. There has been talk about developing the waterfront for years, but little talk about developing other areas in the city that have huge business growth potential. Areas like downtown, Pleasant Street, Columbia Street, and Plymouth Avenue all have potential for increased business growth. These areas will benefit from establishing business improvement districts that are funded by the businesses within their particular boundaries that will work to make these areas successful through marketing plans, capital improvements, additional security, and landscaping improvements. These business improvement districts work in conjunction with our local and state government to establish incentives to assist existing businesses and to recruit new businesses. I understand the people of Forever want a responsible government. I see the potential Forever has and recognize the areas that need to be addressed. I will work strategically to provide a better quality of life for both my family and the citizens of Four River by aggressively and creatively addressing issues that impact economic development, public safety, and education. If substantial improvements are made within these areas, like becoming more business friendly, improving our infrastructure, and making education a priority, we will change the perception of Four River, which will ultimately lead to economic growth and jobs. It is also the responsibility of our elected officials to research and implement creative ways of increasing revenue to fund proper staffing levels for DPW, police, and fire departments. We can only do this by electing the right individuals, and I believe I'm one of them, and that's why I'm running for city council. We have assembled a team that has gathered support and organized individuals that are ready for a new direction for Four River. For more information you can, on my campaign plan, I invite you to go to my website, which is www.chrisbartley.com. I welcome your questions, comments, and input on issues and ideas that are important to you. If you are an individual that feels we can do better, then I look forward to earning your vote on September 13th and ask that you join us on Election Day to restore integrity to the floor of a city council. Thank you very much, and have a great day. I'm Bob Booten, candidate for city council, and I love Fall River. I need your vote to change the direction of the city council. Last election, we chose two new councilors, and I must say, they were excellent choices. Let's keep it up. I propose that each voter that wants real change here in Fall River, study and vote for three new councilors. This would give a solid majority to the voices of reason. First, pick new people that have some experience helping the citizens of Fall River and have knowledge of how city government works. Two, long-term residency is important and candidates must understand the fundamentals of good business practice. During my 12 years on the Water Board, I've had the pleasure of being involved in the establishment of the Bioreserve, which allowed the city to acquire the 300 acres for the biopark. Due to the persistent efforts of the board, we now have a new Townsend Hill water tank that has increased the water quality and pressure in the south end, along with 42 miles of new water main, all during the term that I served. I've been in the real estate, also I've been in the real estate business for 38 years. This is an area that the council needs lots of help. I've toured about a half dozen of the vacant schools. That was quite a few months ago. Nothing has been done to investigate the proper value for these properties. Have you watched the council real estate committee meetings? They're very sad. I was dumbfounded when one of our new councilors suggested that the city should at least consult with the local board of realtors to see if they could help establish values for the properties. What was the answer given to him? 
We don't have time for that. Let's stop shooting from the hip. Yes, many of you have seen this before, but the picture of my house burning on May 11th, 1982. We should not depend on government grants to maintain our, po our police and fire departments at full strength. There is nothing wrong with augmenting our public safety staff with grants. But as you know, the federal government is slashing its budget. We must target a larger percentage of our city budget for public safety personnel. We can't cut police. The neighborhood associations are doing their best to help work with police, but we will always need people on the street. Fall River will not let the criminal element take control of our streets. May God bless and protect all the citizens of Fall River. Thank you, merci beaucoup, obrigado y gracias. Hi, my name is Ronald A. Cabral. I'm running for the Fall River City Council this year because I want to bring fresh ideas to the city. When I was born and raised, I care about the citizens of this city. I've been talking to people in Fall River, Massachusetts while I've been going to various events around the city. I've been going to neighborhood meetings. I've been going block by block, street by street. My issues are public safety, economic development, public safety. I will make sure the Fall River Police Department are at full force once again. They're doing a great job in the city. The EMTs is, in the city is great. The Federal Emergency Management Services does a great job, and I support any ideas they have. They are our heroes in the city of Forward, Massachusetts. My second issue is education. The children are our future leaders of this city. They deserve the best education possible. They are my best priority in my eyes. In this city, we have great school buildings. Our children deserve the best education possible, and I will make sure if elected to Forward City Council, I will get and more education and more support to teachers of the city of Fall River. Economic development. The waterfront is a great place to take a walk on the boardwalk, from the Battleship Cove to the Iowa Jr. Memorial at Bicentennial Park. Fall River has a lot of history, from the Lizzie Borden House on 2nd Street to the former theaters on South Main Street, the Capitol Theater, the Durfee Theater, Academy, Apollo Theater, and our downtown Fall River. We have a great city of 88,000 in our city. We are have to bring the arts back to Fall River, to the city of Fall River. Communication with the residents of my campaign for city council. Work as a team, and you will voters of the city want to change the city council. Elect Ronald Lake Cabral, city council, the right man for the job. And thank you, and have a God bless the citizens of Fall River, Massachusetts. Hi, my name is Russell J. Desbian. I am a candidate for the Fall River City Council. If elected, I will work with our city police and fire department. I will also work with my colleagues on the council and our mayor. I will fight crime to protect our city and work on behalf of the waterfront uh, to have a, um, and also work for our children to have a better city to live in. So please, on Tuesday, September 13th, I ask for one of your votes uh, for Russell Desbian's candidate for the Fall River City Council. Thank you and God bless you all. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Jeff Gregory. I'm running for city council. You might remember my name from the last election. I was 40 votes away from getting to the final election back in 2009. I've chosen to run again because of all the problems the city's facing. A sitting, sitting city council just hasn't got the job done. Since 1920, there's been a member of my family on the police force in every decade. My grandfather, Albert Bradbury, the green up on Stafford and Rhodes named after him, he was on the police force. He was also a founding member of the city council when the city charter got changed in 1930. My father, Captain Charles Gregory, was on the police force for three decades. I was on the police force until the turn of this century. 
Never has the crime in Fall River been this bad. It was a public safety meeting a few weeks ago about funding to get the police back to full complement. One of our sitting councilors interrupted the meeting to ask the fire chief if his department inspects hydrants. This can't go on. The foolishness has to stop. Now, I propose that the Fall River Police Department is the backbone of our city. When I left the police department as head of the police union, there were 260 officers. At the present time, the last count was there were 195. Our crime rate has skyrocketed 400%. There's practically shootings now every day of the week in all parts of the city. The police department is the backbone of our city to get the crime rate down. That is one of the first principles of getting businesses to come to our city, a low crime rate, along with cleaning up our city's streets and sidewalks. Our school system is practically being taken over by the state. Our city council, year after year, passes the budget and asks no questions about the school, school department. In the past several years, the city council has passed the city budget where no one asks a simple question of has the state audit been sent in. This cost our city over $100,000 this past year just by not asking the simple question. All the projects that have been going on in the city, the Brightman Street Bridge, the Route 79 overpass issue, the waterfront, none of our city councils have been involved in the planning of these projects over the past several years. And a few of these city councilors have been there the whole time. My name's Jeff Gregory. I'm experienced, I've had I have the education, I've worked on city budgets, being the head of the police union, and I hope that all of you will vote in the primary, and I hope I'll have the honor of having one of your votes. Thank you. My name is David Mead. I'm running for the seat uh, of city council. Uh, for Fall River, Massachusetts. The reason why I'm running is uh, for public safety and, uh, and also for the young people. Um, I, in the springtime, I also uh, was uh, surveying the uh, city streets, uh, um, taking pictures of uh, the, the, the streets and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and bringing it to the appropriate department. And I also want to work with the Mayor Fall River, and uh, my colleagues of the City Council if I'm elected. So please, vote for Dave Mead, Fall River City Council, on September 13th. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mike Mioza. I'm a candidate for the Fall River City Council. I would like to thank Fall River Cable TV for providing time to the candidates to present themselves to the people of Fall River. In the time provided, I would like to introduce, introduce who I am, why I'm running for city council, and why I believe I would make a good city councilor. I have lived in Fall River for most of my adult life. My wife Susan and I raised our family in the South End, where our children attended public school. And 10 years ago, we purchased our current home in the North End. Living in different parts of the city has given me a different perspective on specific issues affecting our neighborhoods. I am currently employed as a safety engineer by GTEC Corporation and have worked for Fortune 1000, 500, and 100 companies. My business background is important because I believe that city government should run much like a business. I would like to thank the Fall River voters who supported my run for city council in the past. The last election, I missed being one of your city councilors by a mere 134 votes. So why am I running again? I'm running because I care about Fall River and you, the citizens of Fall River. I'm running because I don't believe city government is addressing important issues currently facing the city. I'm running because I want to serve on a proactive city council, one that does not get sidetracked by short-term hot-button issues. I'm running so that people throughout the city have an elected official they can call 
who will give them a straightforward answer to their questions. I'm running to provide a vehicle for residents' ideas on improving the city. I'm running so that citizens know they have an elected official who is not tied or indebted to any organizations and whose only agenda is to serve the people of Fall River. I'm running to help set up an infrastructure that will turn Fall River into a city that provides an economic and political model for the rest of the state. I want to help lead our community in the most effective manner and improve the quality of life here in Fall River. I want to be part of the solution to the problems facing our city. In these tough economic times, difficult decisions have to be made. Certainly no one has all the answers, but if elected, I promise to evaluate and research each issue confronting the city thoroughly in order to make an informed decision and to be a voice of reason. One thing you will always know is that my decisions will be made in the best interests of the people of Fall River. I am proud to be a resident of Fall River. Fall River is a good city and should not be defined by its problems. Fall River should be defined on how it deals with those problems. Every community has its own unique personality, its own rhythm and vibrancy, and its own unique challenges. Fall River is no different. The city has the basic building blocks of an extraordinary location and an untapped waterfront. It has a colorful and rich history, some wonderful architecture to help in its future development, and the promise of commuter rail. However, I have watched our city flounder over the years. I believe we can do better. By working together to create solutions, we can improve our economic situation, create jobs, improve education, and reduce crime. Other cities have had similar struggles to those experienced by Fall River. With creative leadership, they have been able to turn around to become vibrant models of development, attracting new business and large numbers of visitors. Fall River can become one of those vibrant models. With the right leadership, the city's potential can be realized. I want to contribute to our city's renaissance. How do we change our direction? It starts with a commitment to make our city a priority. Now here's what I've learned in talking with folks over the past few months. People are eager for change. I respectfully ask for your vote on Tuesday, September 13th, so I can fight to make Fall River a better place to live, work, play, and visit. As your city councilor, I want to be part of the partnership that will work hard to achieve our potential. I ask for your vote for a safer, cleaner, and business-friendly Fall River. Throughout the course of this campaign, I've unveiled a series of proposals for addressing some of our pressing challenges. I don't claim to know all the answers, but I do believe that we can make great strides on the issues of education, crime, and the cleanliness of our city if we proceed in a spirit of collaboration, creativity, courage, and vision. I hope you will find the time to learn more about my candidacy. For more information about my ideas or to join in the effort for change, please visit myozaforcitycouncil.com. It's up to you. We can continue to be a regressive city, or we can vote for change on the city council so we can start the process of becoming a progressive city. Let me end by saying, together we will move this city forward. If I win, you win. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ray Mitchell. Two years ago, I asked the voters of Fall River for their support in my quest to be elected to the Fall River City Council. The support given me was gratifying and humbling. The issues that we spoke about then were economic development, public safety, and education. Those who have kept abreast of the city council meetings know that I have stayed true to my promises. I have been in the forefront on public safety issues. I co-sponsored an, is an initiative to establish a most wanted list. After speaking with the police chief and the four of the Herald News, the Herald News published pictures of the 10 most wanted individuals in our city. Once this was established in the newspapers, these individuals were subsequently apprehended. I also was instrumental in establishing a program to increase fines for illegal dumping. Those fines were increased from $100 to $300, with two-thirds of the fine going to the police department so that we could put more police officers on the streets. Another program that I sponsored was for salespeople who sell their wares door to door. A requirement was established for them to apply to the police department for a license. If approved, by a background check, which includes a Cori check, they were issued a badge that must be worn when they sell their wares door to door. This was done so that the Florida rights 
can feel comfortable when a salesperson comes to their door and to make it uncomfortable for scam artists. Another major concern for me has been our industrial park. It came to my attention that a company was contemplating moving out of Fall River because for six years they had been trying to get fiber optic capability at their site. To be honest, I was shocked and disappointed to find out that in 2011, our park did not have that capability. I asked the company to give me time to address this issue, and I, along with a colleague, worked to get this issue re resolved. Through our initiative, we were able to prevent the departure of that company from our industrial park. That company now has fiber optic comp capabilities, and we are currently working on making fiber optics available to all sites in our industrial park. Without fiber optic and broadband capabilities, it would be almost impossible to get companies to move into Fall Rivers Industrial Park. I have been a proponent of making an appropriate zoning for our waterfront. If we in Fall River are going to develop and revitalize the waterfront, we must have the proper zoning so that we can attract developers. I am proud to say that we have passed an ordinance in Fall River that makes sense for the revitalization of our waterfront. As many of you know, I have been a longtime advocate for the Fall River. I have served in various cap capacities in our cities, and I am proud of many initiatives that I have been involved in. I served on the school committee and the Diamond School Committee, and I have always been a strong supporter of education, and I will continue to be. I have always also supported and will continue, continue to support state-mandated minimum school spending. In 2002, I was not only honored, but also surprised to be named Vocational School Committee Man of the Year for my services on the Diamond School Committee. In 2003, I was awarded a Lifetime Achievement Award by the Massachusetts Association of School Committees. Ladies and gentlemen, Forever has been my home since birth, and I will always respect and honor my time in service of my community. So again, I ask for your support to return me to the City Council. Being retired, I have the time, and more importantly, the desire to be a full-time City Councilor. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank FRC TV for the opportunity uh, to come up here and say a few words on my candidacy uh, coming up uh, in September. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Leo Pelletier, and I've been on the council for some 26 years. And I say to you, the people of Fall River, there's nothing like experience. I've worked on many, many issues here in the city of Fall River for 28 years, some small, some large. Uh, we have 17 schools that have to be sold. We've been having a lot of problems uh, trying to disperse of these schools. Uh, right now, we're in process asking a request for proposals, and that went out this month. And I've called the City Hall up uh, today, and there don't seem to be too much interest in buying some of these schools. We lowered the price to uh, uh, one dollar that you could buy it, but you have to come up with some kind of good proposals. And a lot of the, the residents where the schools are do not want housing. So that's something that I'm going to look close at to make sure there's no housing that's going to be put in there. But, you know, you could put a uh, lawyer's office, maybe doctor's offices in there, professional building, whatever the case may be. Also, some of the areas, maybe we can knock it down, maybe for a park for the kids. But uh, it's going to be dealt with, and we will deal with it. We advertise in a, a central register for the state, the Boston Herald, Providence Journal, and Herald News. We're just waiting to see what's going to happen. Jobs, jobs, jobs for Fall River. I think that's the most important thing that we have to do. I said it before, and it has to be done. We got the biopark that, that, that we are creating now, but it will only bring jobs in the future, as many maybe as 8,000. Uh, the mayor has tried very hard to get uh, casino gaming here in the city of Fall River. 
But first of all, it's going to go through Boston. Once it goes through Boston, then we'd like to get it set up in Fall River. It will create some five to 6,000 jobs, and you know we need jobs. Also, we have a, a, an ordinance, a revised ordinance on the waterfront that will bring many jobs and many different companies. That's something else that I looked into, and uh, we'll be voting on that this week or next week to ease up the permitting uh, the permitting to make it easier for people to bring banks, uh, maybe theater, restaurants in this particular area. And I am certainly all for that because that creates jobs. One thing that bothers me somewhat is uh, Proposition 2 and a half. We go out throughout the community and we see a lot of people are having a hard time paying their bills. And it's just that I would not uh, propose overriding proposition two and a half. But if it has to be done, it would have to go to the voters of Fall River. And if they decide that they need an override here in the city of Fall River, they would have to say, we'll vote for it, put it on the ballot. Also facing the city of Fall River, as we well know, all the problems with the gangs and the prostitutions that have uh, been throughout the city of Fall River. I feel that the police department has done a good job, and I'm hoping they have enough help to continue the situation of rounding up the girls and uh, take them off the street. Uh, it's something that uh, is just no good for the city, and we have to clear that up. Other, other than that, uh, like I said, uh, I could use your vote. I'd like to be there for another two years. And the best thing I got going for me constituent service that I do day in and day out. People stop me on the road. People stop me in restaurants. They see my truck. They'll stop me and ask me for whatever they need. And if I can take care of them, I tell it like it is. And if I can't do it, I'll tell them. And if I can do it, I'd gladly do it. I can have somebody tell me right now that they need something. I'll pick up the phone and call right in front of them because i got plenty of time to do that. With that, I ask you for your support and your vote coming up September. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Eric Poulin, candidate for Fall River City Council. Since arriving on the Fall River City Council, I have worked very hard to address issues such as public safety, economic development, and education. My belief was and is that we can keep doing the same things over and over again and hope for different results, or we can realize that this is the very definition of insanity and start to move Fall River in a bold new direction. Sometimes my initiatives have been successful, and other times those defending the status quo have blocked them, but that is precisely why this election is so important. For those of you that have watched a city council meeting or two, Hopefully you have noticed that I always try to do my homework on the issues and that I have therefore earned the opportunity to retain my seat on the Florida City Council. Hopefully you've also noticed that I believe that it is important to stay involved in the community, not just during election time, but all the time. I have attended and continue to attend neighborhood meetings and many other meetings and events throughout the community because I do care. If you put your faith in me for City Council once again, you will continue to get a counselor who will research the issues thoroughly and someone that will not be a rubber stamp nor an obstructionist, but who will have the city's best interests and your best interests in mind with each and every vote that I take. I humbly and respectfully ask for your vote on Tuesday, September 13th. Thank you. Hi, my name is Michael Ramos and I'm a candidate for city council. I want to first tell you a little bit about myself. I live and work here in the city of Forva, and I attended college at Bristol Community College. I'm the father of two beautiful little girls. My wife and I own a home here, and for those reasons alone, I'm concerned and interested about where our city is going. But it's more important than just that. From the standpoint of crime, I've seen a change in direction that's frightening, that really concerns me. Just recently, several police officers were arresting an individual and a larger group of citizens joined along and started throwing rocks at the police officers. I can't remember a time where I've ever seen that before. 
We're down 60 police officers, and that equation does not work. I've spent 20 years plus volunteering in this community and working hard in this community, and I don't remember a time where I've ever heard or seen something like that take place. That is why I think public safety is our single most important issue and obstacle that we are facing. Because all of the other things that are so very important to us, like education, economic growth, arts and entertainment, development of the waterfront, are all dependent on our ability to have a safe community. Businesses do not relocate to communities that are not safe. Families do not buy houses if they're afraid and they cannot take their children to the parks. And our ability to educate our youth is diminished as well. Our seniors, our senior citizens who have spent their entire lives working and giving to our city are in fear of walking to church and being robbed. That is why I believe we have to start by making public safety our first priority before we can get to any of those other initiatives. I have some great ideas for our community, but I need your vote to make it happen, and it has to start first with public safety. So I respectfully ask you to consider me, consider voting for Michael Ramos on September 13th. My name's gonna be somewhere at the bottom of the ballot, probably second or third from the bottom. Connect that line. That's all I need is just one vote to make a difference. Thank you. Hello, my name is Daniel M. Rigo, and I am a candidate for the Fall River City Council. I have lived in the city of Fall River for most of my life. I came here from the Azores when I was approximately five years of age and have lived here ever since. I am married to my wife, Melissa, my daughter, and I'm proud father of my daughter, Nadia and Brianna, and my stepson, Kyle. I currently live in the East Main section of our city. I know our city all too well and love this city with all my heart. This is my home, and I love Fall River. I have heard the cry of many of you on the current state of our city. Our police department is not at full staff, down by 60 plus police officers. Our fire department is on grants from the federal government that may or may not be here next year. Finally, jobs. In my current job, every day, I seek jobs for Fall River rights to put local people to work. Every day, I am out there talking to owners of businesses, developers, and all components that will create jobs in our city. All of these issues are vital components to our future of the city of Fall River and need to be addressed aggressively by our elected leaders. To be going on and electing leaders and re-electing leaders that do not represent us cannot go on. The plan that I have is to be proactive in my city and work closely with these vital components. By working closely with the leaders of these departments, the mayor's office, and my colleagues alongside me for the better of our city. I plan on working with the Office of Economic Development and make sure that we are using all our resources to create job growth in our city. By reaching out to business owners, developers, and informing them about what our city and what the people have to offer. The lack of representation of our elected leaders has gone on for way too long. As an example, the stormwater fee. You, the voter, need to hold the city council responsible just as much as we've held the prior administrations responsible. They too knew about the upcoming stormwater fee 
for the reconstruction of our stormwater drain system. 30 years, to be exact, and never raised awareness to you, the taxpayer. And much to my surprise, they are always reelected year after year. On September 13th, you, the voter, need to send a clear message to our elected leaders that the people of Fall River are not going to condone not being represented any longer. I have a plan. And the plan is to put you, the people of Fall River first, in the best interest of you, the taxpayer, the voters of this city. I respectfully ask for your vote on September 13th, and let me be the voice and change that we so desperately need. Thank you, God bless, and God bless the city of Fall River. Those are the candidates running for mayor and city council in the September 13th preliminary election. All successful candidates, including those for school committee, will have the opportunity to tape a new statement in preparation for the November 8th city election. If you'd like to see these statements again, you can do so through Election Day at frctv.org. Go to the top of the home page and click on the Election 2011 menu. FRCTV will also be working in conjunction with Fred TV and FRG TV in producing results come election night. Stay tuned for more details. That'll do it for Meet the Candidates. I'm Keith Tebow, and please make a point to vote on Tuesday, September 13th.